Road Trip to History is made possible in part by... Founded in 1777 and nestled in the beautiful Potomac Highlands, surrounded by historic valleys and rich pasture land, you will find one of West Virginia's best kept secrets. Welcome to historic Moorfield, West Virginia. The first inhabitants of the South Branch Valley were Indian tribes who hunted and cleared fields where they raised crops. The Seneca Trail ran through the valley. In 1725, John Van Meter, an Indian trader from New York, explored what is now Hardy County. He found the Indian fields and described the broad valley as the best land he had yet seen. The settlers received land grants from Lord Fairfax and the Commonwealth of Virginia or bought and leased land from distant holders of grants. Lord Fairfax hired George Washington and others to survey his land. In the 1750s, the British were fighting the French and the Indians. Fort Pleasant, established by George Washington, figured in the Battle of the Trough, where settlers were ambushed. The count given was seven whites, and three Indians killed. No forts are standing today, but the meeting house built in 1812 and the house built by the meters in 1832 were both named Fort Pleasant for the fort located nearby. During the Revolutionary War, families supplied wagons and foodstuffs to support Washington's army. The first cattle drive from the area may have been cattle collected for Washington's army and sent on the hoof down the South Branch Valley and the river. Moorfield, established in 1777 by the Virginia General Assembly on land donated by Conrad Moore, was placed near the center of the valley at the confluence of the South Fork and the South Branch of the Potomac River. It is the fourth oldest town in West Virginia. Half acre lots were sold and the new owners were required to build an 18 square foot structure with a chimney of stone or brick within two years of purchasing the lot. The Higgins House was one of these. The Old Stone Tavern built by Thomas Parsons in 1788 is the only building in town constructed of field stone. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1979. Moorfield was a part of Hampshire County, and the county seat was in Romney, 35 miles away. That was deemed too far for the conduct of business, so in 1786, Hardy County was formed with Moorfield its county seat. Farms large and small dotted the valley. The raising of beef was one of the most important activities, and Hardy became the leading county for beef production in Virginia and one of the leading counties in the United States. Shorthorn cattle were raised in these farms and driven by hoof over 100 miles to some of the cities of the East like Baltimore, Philadelphia, and others. Agricultural wealth then supported a lifestyle for the wealthy who built such beautiful homes as Willow Wall, built by the McNeils. By the mid-1850s, 25 manor homes had been built along the South Branch. A few of these homes were Mill Island, the Willows, and Hickory Hill. The town of Moorfield reflected the life of the rural community around, and in 1850, there were 287 residents of whom 34 were free blacks and 87 were slaves. Private schools and tutors educated those who could pay among the wealthiest, 
and their sons were able to attend colleges like the University of Virginia and William and Mary. For most of the century, citizens of Hardy County shared Union churches, but in 1836, the Presbyterians voted to establish their own congregation. It's interesting to note that during the Civil War, the sanctuary was used by both sides as a hospital and possibly a stable. The most significant of the engagements around Moorfield was what was now known as the Battle of Moorfield, and which probably should be called the Battle of Holfield. There, Union forces surprised Confederate cavalry returning from a raid into Pennsylvania and Maryland and inflicted heavy casualties. Confederate and Union bodies both after, after the battle were laying out on the porch of Willow Wall. Hardy County's overwhelming support for the South during the war between the states can be seen by a stroll through Olivet Cemetery. The older section contains almost 150 graves of Confederate soldiers. The best known Confederate soldier from Hardy County was John Hanson McNeil. By the beginning of the war, he was living in Missouri where he had become a prominent cattleman as well as a lay preacher in his church. He returned to Hardy County where he formed the well-known partisan rangers group known as McNeil's Rangers. Mortally wounded in a successful attack on a Union force at Means Bottom in Virginia in October of 1864, he died a month later in Harrisonburg where he was buried with full Masonic honors and his men later had his body removed and brought back to Hardy County. George Washington A. Little was a free black man who served in McNeil's Rangers. He was nicknamed Mammy Little because of his duties with, as commissary sergeant. He was one of the first men to reach Captain McNeil when he was mortally wounded. And after the war, when he died in Grant County in 1908, his body was returned to Hardy County where he was buried in the Confederate Circle. Abraham Spengler was the highest ranking Confederate officer from Hardy County. Small in stature, he only stood five feet four. He enlisted as captain of the, in the 33rd Virginia, part of the famed Stonewall Brigade. He was wounded at Cedar Mountain and returned to duty and by the end of the war had been promoted to colonel and was commanding a brigade. John J. Chipley entered the war as a private in the Hardy Blues and when they were reorganized in 1862, he was elected captain. He was wounded at Newmarket, Virginia and by the end of the war had been promoted to major. At the end of the war, he resumed his law practice in Moorfield and was later elected mayor of Moorfield. Richard C. Price was a five foot, eight inch, 18 year old when he enlisted in the 7th Virginia Cavalry. He served throughout the war and was paroled in Romney in 1865. His mother also served the Confederacy as postmistress in Moorfield during the war. After the war, he became a prominent businessman and farmer, when he died in 1926, he was the last Confederate soldier in Moorfield. The words on the monument to Confederate war dead in Olivet Cemetery express very well the feelings of most of the people in Hardy County just eight years after the war. The monument honors 125 men who were from Hardy County or who died in Hardy County during the war. It stands in the middle of the Confederate circle which contains the graves of many of the men listed on it. Present arms! And that will have the laying of the wreath. From the time it was erected until well into the 20th century, ceremonies were held here honoring Hardy County's Confederate soldiers. This tradition has been revived by McNeil's Rangers Camp 582, the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Each year, they hold a ceremony and decorate graves with flags and candle luminaries and read the names of the men being honored, followed by a rifle and sometimes cannon salute.
Moorfoot Examiner is the oldest family owned business and still in existence in Hardy County, or still running in Hardy County. Uh, my grandfather, Samuel A. McCoy, purchased the paper in 1902 and he ran it until his death in 35, after which my mother and father took over the paper. In 1969, I came back as the editor and publisher of the paper and have been there for 40 years. The Morefoot Examiner is a, an award-winning newspaper, both editorial and advertising. It's been recognized for general excellence by the West Virginia Press Association. And there's always been an editorial page, which is not always true of, of weekly papers, but we have, we have maintained that tradition in our family. The family has taken the paper from handset type at the, after the turn of the century to hot metal, to cold type, and in the last several years we have gone online and we electronically send our paper to a printer 60 miles from Moorfield every week and it's uh, it's a century of of change not only for the family but also for the, the method in which we publish the paper. The examiner's predecessors have been tracked back to 1845. The first paper in in Moorfield was the Courier Advertiser and it was located in a building no longer standing. It was called the Taylor Building on the corner of Winchester and, and Main. Two memories, one of my earliest memory of, of the newspaper and of my family's involvement. I was probably about four. My father was in the Navy, my mother was trying to continue the paper's regular publication. And I was sitting across the desk from her in the office writing a letter to Santa Claus. My mother very carefully folded it up, and put it in an envelope, addressed it and then sent it to Santa by way of the wood stove. The second memory that left a, a real impression on me was when the flood of November 4 and 5 hit Northfield. The examiner is a record keeper uh, of events affecting Moorfield, uh, the area. Uh, activities of our readers and, and, and school events, what our elected officials and government offices do. One of the things that's unique to the area was something called Ride the Fantastics. It was a mummers parade, New Year's Day, men dressed up, um, rode horseback, uh, drank uh, great quantities of, of alcohol and had a good time. The Bar Band was a family of, of musicians from the Rig area who appeared at political gatherings, uh, parades, picnics, whatever, wherever they were needed or wherever they wanted to show up, that's where they would be. Captain Hugh Barr, who started the band, served as a drummer under Stonewall Jackson. Moorfield High School made local history in 1996 when the local football team won the state championship. It didn't just win that year though, it won the next four years. The Moorfield Examiner has been very proud to be part of the history of, of Moorfield and the area for 107 years. We hope to be around for another 100. Walking through the town of Moorfield can be like a journey back in time with street after street of beautifully restored buildings, homes, landscapes, and gardens. Some of the more historic buildings include the Maslin House, built in 1848 by one of Hardy County's leading political spokesman, Thomas Maslin. Built in 1793, this was the second courthouse, and it was used as a courthouse until 1860. Built in 1907, Innskeep Hall was the community center, and it now houses 
the Moorfield town government. The Parsons House, one of the four remaining original log houses in Moorfield, Captain James Parson, veteran of the French and Indian and Revolutionary Wars, purchased the lot in 1785. It's easy to see that the people of Moorfield and Hardy County are proud of their history and culture. The Moorfield Tannery was built by Thomas Cover and his family, and Moorfield was selected because of the vast resources of, of chestnut bark located in this area. The tannery had a capacity of 100 hides per day. The main products there were sole leather and belting leather. The tannery closed in the late 70s. Moorfield is the poultry capital of West Virginia and also the home of the uh, uh, West Virginia Poultry Association. Uh, the poultry industry started its major growth at, during World War II. Uh, with this growth, uh, Rockingham Poultry Marketing Cooperative uh, built a new processing plant in Moorfield in 1944. Another poultry industry located here was Pierce Chick of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mr. Hester purchased Pierce Chick in 1964. Mr. Hester was a very visionary person uh, for poultry products for the, for the food service trade. One of the most famous ones being